Hello everyone, this is Pamper2. Um, I wanted to give, me, give you guys an update on what I've been doing with this camera here. Um, today we're not going to look at the image as much. I'm just going to talk. So, I ran it for 8 hours the other day and I started getting um, some scrambling on the, the, the monitor here. And once I let it cool off and turned it on again, it's been running for about an hour and a half. Um, I'm starting to wonder if I'm just reforming capacitors because I've had mechanical um, errors pop up as we warmed it up. Uh, right after it got to temperature, it um, like maybe 30 minutes in, it started having, you can hear it, mechanical errors where it was too, too fast, too slow, and you can hear it kind of joggling around. But since um, an hour went by, it now sounds perfect. So all the grease and everything is uh, lubricants are, are up to temperature as well. But yeah, I took um, the first time I had it running. I used it for eight to ten hours. I was looking around out um, across the river, and um, as soon as I went to put it away, it failed, and it was something in here electronically in here. Um, and the second time I powered it up, it happened within 10 minutes of it getting down to temperature. So about 30 minutes. Uh, but right now it's been an hour and a half and it seems to be running clean. I can, uh, focus. That's the focus. And you're looking at me in pajamas, so that's out of the wrong way. Okay. Well, let me get in here into a color palette I can see better. Okay, I'm going to adjust the contrast. Focus. There we go. And I'm going to adjust this wheel here. There's a, I need more than two hands to do this thing. Okay. But there you go. There's my fingers. Um, so I, if you do get one of these on eBay or anyone who just wants to know, um, yeah, it seems like the capacitors, they haven't been ran in 15 years or 20 years. Um, actually, 30 years. It's been 30 years since it's made, so 20, 25 years in storage, you'll have some capacitors go out on you 10 hours in. But it seems like they are reforming well. Um, same as radios and TVs. This is no different electronically. So, there you go. Um, I do wish I had an extra set of hands so I can keep the camera here and stand way over here. I'm focusing the thermal thing. Okay, I'm focusing the scanner. And I get it focused. This, these are the ripples. Where am I? These are the ripples on my uh, sleeper that you see there. Let me adjust this down. There's my hands. You can actually see my nails if you focus in on them. Um... I'll go into another feature this has. <clears throat> we'll put the camera to the side, the scanner to the side. Um, it has a floppy drive, and I've been saving pictures on it. Each disc holds 25 pictures, so if I load that in there, hit recall. Now, when I turn this knob, this big one, you'll see the number changing at the lower part of the screen in the center. So each each one of those numbers is a different image I, I can go to load. So let's load image zero. And then I, all I have to do is hit recall. It's loading. And up should pop the image. Oh, there's a gallery, okay. So zero goes to the gallery. I didn't know that. I thought zero was a photo. But if we look at this gallery here, there's a picture of my Fleur cell phone. So seven. Should I load seven? Well, four is interesting too. Let's look at four. So let's go recall. On the screen we see zero. Let's go to four. Hit recall again. It's 
stinking. There it goes. And um, this is a thermal image. It's in black and white, but it can be translated to other colors. So I can hit color. Uh, hit, hit color. Come on. Yeah, okay. And then I can hit these buttons here to change the palette. But I seem to have the best results with the red to black. It has the highest contrast and um, it, it's easier for my eyes to see on this little monitor. Now if we plugged it in, I haven't showed you guys the back yet. So let's turn it around here. And well, I can't turn on a light. Um, hold on. I think I got one here. So on the back you have um, the power switch for the compressor, power switch for the computer. This is an input. So like, let's say you had another camera and you wanted to run it through or I don't know why there's an input. I'm just trying to tell you what it's for. Um, but there's an output right here. This one says uh, for black and white and color. So that would go to a NTSC television and you would get the full resolution. The model 760, this is a 740, the model 760 has an RGB HV output, which is um, the same, same thing as what you have on your laptop, uh, that one there, okay? It's RGB HV, it's analog video, <clears throat> but it's, um, the resolution is infinity, I mean, you can have any resolution you want on a analog cable, as long as the cable can handle that bandwidth. Um, I don't need to go into too much more detail there. But, um, let's go ahead and shut the system off. And I'll make this just a longer video. I haven't done this in a while. So, I'm going to unscrew this cable so I can show it to you. I've had one of these before, and the previous version didn't have the same cable, so uh, but there's every single pin you see in there. I'm guessing 60, but you can count them if you want. There's quite a few in there. But um, that's for the scanner. And it has electrical connections for receiving and sending. It has electrical connections for controlling the pump, the uh, scanner, the uh, video, and, and when it comes back as video. And probably feedback loops for all these things like scanner and sensor. But every single thing, it's a big thick cable. And you kind of just line it up till it, you feel the notch right there. And you just screw it in. You know, feel the notch, there's the notch. try the other hand. I'm right-handed, but I use my left hand about 40% of the time. Okay, where are we? Is that the one? Okay. Yeah, you kind of just have to get the teeth in there. There we go. Got it. Um, did I get it? I think I got it. Well, let's turn it back on and see. Yeah, I, it's, it's working. Oh, look, it's purple now. Well, you can't see it on this screen, but there it goes. I fixed it. <laughs> uh, so one of the wires for the color is really loose on this. There, I made it purple again. Let's see if I can bring it way in there. You can see how it's purple. There, now it's white. <laughs> now it's white. So, enough of this, though. It seems to be working well. The capacitors just needed to reform. Let me get out the... Uh, yeah, more light in here. This is about as much light as I can get, but I can bring this over here. This is the case that it comes in. There's a sticker. It says, Think Thermally. 
Infometrics. And it has a handle for pulling it and three uh, screw tabs that come off. And so this is what's inside. You have two layers. The top layer holds your cable and your user's manual. But um, I learned how to use it without the user's manual. This is the second one I've owned. Um, <coughs> Underneath that, that's where the uh, computer goes, the scanner goes. If you had a zoom lens, it would go there. I don't know what this thing is. I haven't, oh, wow, top heavy. I haven't, um, I think that's just for viewing. That You put that on the screen so you can view it in the daylight. What else is in here? Oh wow, the smell's amazing. I wish I could, um, I, I can't describe it, but it's vintage high-end electronics smell. That's all I can say. It reminds me of Tektronics. Get this thing to go down. Did it snap in place? What did I do? Oh, yeah, you gotta push it. You gotta squeeze it. There it goes. So, as for viewing it, um, let's take a closer look at the user's manual because there's some thing I'd like to show in there. <clears throat> Focus. Focus. Come on. <laughs> oh, there it goes. Close. Okay. So, it's a pretty decent manual. This is just how to operate. This is um, a cart that it would have come on so you can make it a little more portable um, that had the um, battery pack at the bottom. But there was another option that you can wear it. And so this is what it looked like if you wore it. The hard hat is not included, but um, that's how you would have worn it with this thing that Velcroed around your chest. And the battery pack would have been probably on the back side of him there. It doesn't show it, but I think it has um, more details on how to put it on, how to mount the hardware. But, yeah, mainly you had 30 minutes of use, and let's say you're going into a building that had just burned down, and you want to look at it, or someone hired you to look at their electrical uh, needs, and you, you went in there. So this cost around $200,000 in 1990. All right, and so it would have been rented out, and it would be me wearing that, and you rented me with it for an extra, well, I don't know what they rented for, but if I had to guess, it be a few hundred dollars an hour and if you were to rent me to wear it uh, it would probably be five hundred six hundred dollars an hour <clears throat> but currently I'm probably the only one left that knows how to use one of these things it's been 30 some years 30 31 31 years this is just old technology that I love but uh, I can't afford a digital one with equivalent specs uh, I'd be spending thirty thousand to sixty thousand dollars, and I just can't do that right now. Um, but this you can. There's two available on eBay. There's a a seven forty and a seven sixty. They're both about a thousand dollars, depending on where you live. But uh, that's what's. That's, um, this is my second one, and the reason why the first one didn't make it was because of where I was at uh, the old house. But here's some boards. <clears throat> you want to talk about child abuse? Well, I was older than the kid, but he sure was abusing me, and I had to hide this stuff from him. He would take my cables and break my stuff, and I'd come back to the lab. And there's a big cut in my cord. <clears throat> so I'd just take it apart. But this is the... um. <clears throat> The graphics processor in the device, a GC100A-PC, this is right here is just an 8088, um, AMD made this one, but that's just an 8088 microprocessor, um, it's an EEPROM, there is a RAM or a memory, uh, here's another, that's a, a FPGA? Well, what does that go to? That goes to the 
Well, I can't remember, but that's a video process uh, um, video processing chip. So that probably took the composite or RGBHV uh, so that these guys can handle it. There's GPU, CPU, RAM, ROM, backwards, RAM, ROM, and a uh, RGB um, controller. So that would have plugged in. There's there was ten stacks. There's ten boards. This isn't all of them. I just have three in my hand right now. Um, I can probably grab a fourth one here. Uh, half of them went on the wall. My mom took the other half. That's why they're here. <sighs> so there's ten boards inside of that box. This board here. We have some RAM. Um, I'd have to look these up, but if I were to guess, it was for processing the text on the screen. And the back plane, well, if we line them all up, or what we have left lined up, there are uh, ribbons that went down each one. Um, this one here is power supply. So it regulates the voltage for uh, tw 12 volts and 5 volts. Nothing more than that on here. It even says so. Power supply board. Um, this board here was probably for handling some of the temperature measurements. This section here. The analog section. Um, and some digital to analog converters and uh, over there too. So this probably was for measuring temperature and converting it into text uh, base, uh, from another board. But this is all I have left of one open apart. And what does it say on here? Oh, okay. 700 video color. And that one says floppy disk controller, but that's what the ED8 would be for. And this was the graphics too. So this would have been right here, graphics, CPU, floppy controller. In this section here. <clears throat> but, um, I, I don't know if the floppies are compatible with IBM uh, formatted floppies, but they might be. I don't know what the image format would be either because it must be bitmap. Um, they didn't have any image compression that was popular yet, so JPEGs didn't come out till like 1996. Uh, and this is 1990. So it's probably bitmap. Probably bitmap. I don't know what you guys are interested in, but I'm just showing you. <laughs> That's the thermal camera. Um, I'll give you an update on the rest of my living condition. All right, so I'm at my parents' house. This is my room. Uh... I put up as much art as I could to make it feel like more like home. And I am currently in the process of buying a house down the street. So my parents let me stay here and in between. And that's what's going on. I have the largest stockpile of talcum baby powder. This whole corner is a uh, solid talc. That's for me, but they don't make it anymore, and they stopped selling it on Amazon a few months ago. <clears throat> um, so I got that there, and these are just diapers and some extras they sent me, and a fish, and then my art there. This is where I sleep. It's pretty good. Um, And there's a bunny head that somehow gotten here. So none of my stuff is here. There's no. This my. This is a clothes they bought me. I hate them. I won't wear them. Let's see if I can. This is what I'm wearing now. It's not even the one I like. Uh. Well, that no one's here. Let's end the video. End the video with a toilet flush. Oh, Sean!
take a look at my fridge here. This is their fridge. That's my fridge. Well, we share it, but that's where drinks go. That's where frozen things go. I keep my food up here. Got both sides. It's enough food for a month. <clears throat> this is their side. This is their stuff. Not how I want to live. But I'll put up with it for another few months anyway. <clears throat> I know my rooms can be pretty c filled with crap too, but this crap has cat fur and porcelain figurines that I, I just can't, I can't, I can't watch TV. I watch TV and I start getting really angry at the commercials. <sighs> All right. This is Pampered You, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.